everyone, this is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be discussing my pain processing techniques. This is part of a series of videos I've been working on where I've been talking about different types of pain in BDSM, how to evaluate your pain tolerance, how to improve your pain tolerance, different processing techniques, different types of impact play, all of that stuff. It's a really big part of BDSM and it's a really big part of a lot of people's motivations for being part of BDSM. It's really difficult to condense in one video, which is why I've been doing this ongoing series. And I've also had a lot of self-discovery for myself in this vein just in the last couple of months anyways. So I'm gonna be continuing this series. There are definitely a lot more videos that I wanna do about this. But today I am specifically going to be discussing my personal pain processing methods, my journey to where I am today in terms of pain processing, what I started out doing, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get into it. When I first got started in BDSM, I've actually been in BDSM for four years now. I was by no means a natural born masochist. I'm still not a natural born masochist. I'm not somebody who was motivated to participate in BDSM because of a desire for pain, not because I found impact play erotic. I don't really get an erotic or sexual charge from BDSM in general, but certainly not with impact play specifically. So I was not somebody who was already like hardwired or driven to do impact play, but I have had a lot of partners who have been sadists. I've had a lot of partners who have been interested in doing impact play. And I personally enjoy it, even though I'm not able to process it directly as an enjoyable experience, let's say. It's something that I enjoy being able to make my partners happy. It's something that I enjoy the personal challenge of. I find it fulfilling as a submissive to be able to offer this service to my partners. And I also just enjoy learning more about being able to push my body's boundaries. And I am starting to learn how to convert this consciously into something that is pleasurable as opposed to having this inborn innate desire for pain because I'm never going to make that happen but there are still ways that you can make pain more enjoyable or at least make it more bearable if you have impact play as an element of your scenes but aren't necessarily somebody who is personally motivated to do it. So at the beginning of my journey in BDSM, my first partner was somebody who was a hedonist. He was somebody who enjoyed giving and receiving pleasure and teaching people and showing people how to grow into BDSM and, and become their own individual motivated BDSM people. And that's a story for another time, you know, if people want to want to hear about all of that. But the only one I've had when my partner hasn't been a sadist of some variety, but we did start out doing impact play because I was doing kind of a survey of a bunch of different types of BDSM. So we were doing stuff like rough body play and blindfolds and gags and impact play because these are all things that are sort of treated as introductory BDSM experiences. They are something that a lot of people instantly recognize as being part of BDSM or that they know that they want to try as opposed to maybe more esoteric things like fire cupping or even wax play. It's not something that people have an immediate association with. And because it's so common, it is also something that a lot of people discover that they very much enjoy that they maybe didn't even consciously recognize before they got involved in BDSM. But we started out doing some light impact play. We did things like floggers and we did canes and we also definitely did like spanking and again like rough body play. And it was more about me just learning what the sensation felt like rather than anything about pain processing in general. It was just, what does this sensation feel like? You know, how hard can we go doing this? What areas of the body feel good to hit or to not hit or how hard? And I think that's an important place to start is just knowing where your natural boundaries are at and where your natural limits are at without any sort of conscious training of your body to have any other reaction that it does naturally. And the reason why I recommend that you start out not even trying to consciously process doing anything is one, because I did it that way. And two, because I think it's really difficult if you are unfamiliar with this sensation at all to one, be able to remember how to use safe words, two, remember how to do in-scene communication and give feedback, 
three, be able to consciously process what something even feels like at all, and then four, on top of all of that, being able to subconsciously do pain processing techniques all together at the same time. It's just a really easy way to overload your system. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting out with like trying to do these pain processing things right off the bat. And that's you know what I did. So that's probably why I'm recommending it. But at the same time I was seeing this partner, I also started seeing another partner who ended up being my dom for about a year and a half where he was very, very much a sadist. It was very much like a sadism focused DS relationship. And I don't want to get too much into the details of that relationship just because, you know, first BDSM relationships are hard. And what I want to talk about is more like how I processed pain or rather the things that I learned not to do and how not to treat pain processing, particularly if you're a dominant. So my natural pain processing technique was one where I would become very withdrawn in myself. I am naturally a pretty quiet person, but I become extra quiet when I am I'm doing some forms of impact play. I'm not really bratty, I'm not shouty, I'm not somebody who needs to like scream to like process pain except for in, in some specific situations but I I would become very introverted when we were doing scenes I would become very still and quiet and generally I was trying to almost disassociate from the pain I was trying to separate myself from the pain and, and kind of go beyond it and I'll get more into different natural versus conscious forms of pain processing and and how effective or healthy those are but that's kind of outside the scope of this video so we're going to talk about it later but that was what i was starting out doing is my natural process was just to take the pain but kind of almost self-hypnotize out of like not feeling it which works when the pain is consistent and when it builds up slowly but when the pain is sudden or a surprise or changes it makes it really easy to snap out of because my body isn't expecting it so it kind of ruins that whole thing. However, my dom did not really like it that I would disassociate from the pain and that I was not staying connected with him. It made it very difficult for him to get enjoyment out of it as a sadist and as a dominant and me, again, not being a natural born masochist, not being somebody who had natural inclinations for this type of play, I was like, well, I'm open to trying something different, I guess. So maybe your way of doing it will work better. And basically what he wanted me to do is he wanted me to like focus in on the pain, like, like look at him, make really deep eye contact if possible, stay really, really present in the moment and focus on the pain and like almost try to absorb it rather than trying to separate from it. And because of the conditions under which that was happening, which is to say it was sort of like this really frankly kind of toxic situation where it was like, well, we can do impact play and I'm not really sure that I can continue getting enjoyment out of this if you're not able to do it this way. So it was almost sort of like an ultimatum where I had to learn how to do it this way or this type of play would be removed permanently and me being a, a young submissive at the time and not really kind of knowing my rights so to speak I was like well I guess I kind of have to do it this way so we're just gonna suffer through it and frankly again in the environment that it happened it didn't work out for me and so a really long time passed and I did not really do a whole lot with impact play I just kind of put it on the shelf and it was something that I didn't really want to do I was focused more on service and DS aspects to my relationship and pet play and basically uh, anything else <laughs> besides that. I joked that I did impact play like semi-annually like it was a special event because it's something that I didn't really think I could do. It was something that I didn't think I had the inclination to do uh, but it turns out I was wrong because personal growth and discovery yay because again I found myself in a relationship with a sadist Mr. Tex. But this relationship was different from my last one. It was one that was more focused on support and my own personal growth for my sake, not because the relationship needed it, not because he needed it, but because I had the motivation to want to change, to want to learn more about my body and to want to overcome barriers that I had kind of put in my own way. So we really focused 
on discovering more different types of impact play and what I enjoyed doing. And I actually originally thought that I really liked Stingy. Uh, and that has to do with the types of toys that I was using because the toys I was presented with as Thud were toys that were not only really heavy but also quite mobile. So something like a really, really heavy flogger, which I did not enjoy the sensation of at all. And I like Stingy better than that. So I was like, well, I guess I must be a Stingy person. Turns out though, that is maybe not necessarily the case and my pain processing technique and the types of pain that I enjoyed really kind of all changed over the same weekend and I had learned about pain processing techniques at other conventions and in classes and online but it wasn't until a couple months ago that I really started to consciously decide that I wanted to do more and that I was going to consciously do different pain processing techniques so fully equipped with this new self-knowledge that I enjoyed study impact play and, and moving kind of stinging off the table for a while, I could focus on new methods of pain processing. So I found, depending on the energy of the scene, a couple of different ways that I find effectively process my pain and help me enjoy it more, and also give very positive feedback to my partner to help them know when I'm enjoying it, when I'm not enjoying it, and all that good stuff. Because nonverbal communication in BDSM, especially if you're not able to hear each other in a really loud club or make eye contact, is always a good thing. Uh, so what I discovered for myself is if I am in a sitting position, like if I'm on a spanking bench or if I'm on a table or something, it's so helpful to have music, have something that I can time a rhythm to and then whatever part of my body that's being hit I can I can sway it to the music and I can go to the tempo of the music and just having that tempo that consistency and that beat makes it so much easier to take on the pain and absorb it because ultimately I have kind of combined both my my natural pain processing technique of, of disassociation with a, also a little bit of accepting it, which sounds really confusing, but I'll try to explain it like this. In another video that I did where I was talking about what I learned about myself at Kinkfest, which I'll link down below or it'll be a related video or something, I'm sure, but there's this one phrase that I really latched onto that has really helped my pain processing, and that is, pain is resistance. So what I do is I completely relax my body that is really important. The position that my body is physically in is almost as important as my conscious pain processing. Because if my muscles aren't relaxed, because I'm having to stand on my tiptoes at a St. Andrew's cross, I'm not gonna be able to have as relaxed tissue to work with, which is really important for my pain processing, as it would be if I was laying down, or if I was on a supportive spanking bench, or if I was in suspension cuffs. Also, if I did wanna do a standing position, so having a relaxed body, having something that I can move to the music with, but then also consciously remembering, even if I'm swaying, even if I'm not, even if there's not really any music going on that I can do that to relaxing and leaning into the pain and realizing that it is just pain, that it will, it will pass and it, it will not suck and it doesn't have to suck. That the reason why this pain feels bad is because I have decided that it feels bad. Pain is just a natural experience of the body and being able to lean into that and just consciously remember and say to myself like a mantra that pain is resistance, pain is resistance, pain is resistance. Just being able to say that over and over again to myself is a cue to one, keep my body relaxed and two, prime myself for the reaction that I want to have to the pain, which is positive and is submissive rather than defensive and deflective. Because while in some ways I am still separating myself from the pain, I'm leaning into it and I'm going through it rather than trying to deflect it altogether and deny that I am experiencing it, which is sort of more what disassociating from, from the pain would look like. Uh, so that's something that I do as well. Again, the body movement is, is really important. Um, I find as well that uh, while I am very much a naturally quiet person that has persisted uh, with my pain processing techniques, I find if I'm doing something that is a particularly heavy impact play scene, and if I am doing something where my body has to be still and my dom is like holding my legs and like punching me in the butt over and over again so I'm not really able to sway with that like fighting against him, I found that verbalization does really help uh, breathing also helps a lot too because I can do that kind of no matter what the setup is. So if I am doing a scene that's specifically set up where it's going to be a rhythmic scene where there is going to be kind of this 
bell curve of like it ramps up and then it peaks and it slows down again and I know that's gonna happen and there's gonna be this very gradual curve to it. I can time my breathing to what the music is or to what the actual impact play is and, and being able to breathe in when I expect the pain and being able to breathe out when the pain hits is very important. And that's actually something I learned from like doing needles because needles is a very quick instantaneous pain that doesn't really linger. You basically, that's really the way that you like process pain for needles is because it's so instantaneous. At least for me, that's how I've always done it. Uh, so I adapted what I was already doing for needles specifically to impact play more generally. And being able to practice that breathing very helpful. It's also very connective with a partner if you are able to also time your breath with theirs. Very intimate and it can be very, very DS focused as well. Uh, so basically what I do now is a combination of, uh, of swaying and not resisting and just trying to stay relaxed and, and being mindful and present isn't necessarily something that I consciously try to do. I try to just go with the flow and I, some people may find that mindfulness is helpful for them. Uh, but that's basically what I do for pain processing. I'm going to be talking more in the future for sure about more with pain processing, pain processing techniques in general, how to improve your pain tolerance. So do check out those videos when they are up. If you want to see those and you haven't already, please do subscribe so you get notifications of when I post new videos. I make them twice a week. And if you have any comments or questions, do leave those down in the comment section below. I'm always happy to answer questions when I can. If you want to see more from me, if you like my content, do check out my Patreon. Link to that will be down here and like over here uh, during the end screen. That is the best way to be able to contact me if you want to discuss anything in depth, if you want a guaranteed response to your questions, if you want to be part of my Discord chat, if you want to see exclusive photos and videos and monthly photo shoots, that is where you can check that all out is on Patreon. It helps fund this channel and it means so much to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.